Hello and welcome to episode 68 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet in my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is October 12th, 2020. Today I'm wearing the Braidsmaid shawl by Martina Behm and it's one of those asymmetrical triangular shawls that she's famous for and as far as I know um, she was was she was the first designer to come up with this um, shape of knitting a triangular shawl and by now many designers have um, used it and it's very well known but when she started designing that construction it was really new and interesting and um, something special and um, she's done several designs with this shape and I think this was the first time that I used, that I knit this shape. So I thought that was quite interesting. So it's um, it starts off on this end and you knit a cable in the middle and uh, left and right of the cable you have um, garter stitch and through increases and decreases um, the shawl grows and at a certain point you stop increasing or you stop decrease or you stop doing something <laughs> and then um, this this becomes the tip of the triangle triangle and then you keep increasing on this side and then once the stitches are gone at this side then the um, cable is knit along the edge of the um, of this long end a bit difficult to, <laughs> to explain but I think most of you will have seen this shape and you know how it works. Um, the interesting thing about the cable is that it looks nice on both sides. It does not look exactly the same but I think it looks nicer than most cables do on the wrong side so it doesn't really matter what side you wear outside when you put on the shawl even though I do prefer this side and um, for my taste, this last bit of the shawl is a bit too long, especially as I'm not very tall. If I just um, wear it around my shoulders, it hangs down rather deep. But most of the time, I will um, wrap it around my neck several times anyway, so then it doesn't matter. And if I want to wear it like this, it's really nice to have a long end to um, pull round and then you can tie it or do something and it's, I, I love it this way especially as the yarn is really soft it's um, from Manos del Uruguay the Fino um, yarn <laughs> yeah that's what it's called Fino I'm, I don't know too much about Manos del Uruguay so I don't know about the different bases or the different yarns that they use but um, this is one that I really like and I had two um balls of yarn or two hanks and back then I didn't really know that you're supposed to stripe um, your yarn if you have um, two skeins of yarn um, so I didn't do that and you can I think on screen it's not quite that visible I think but I think this oops yeah you can see it. this is the line where I switch from one skein of yarn to the next so this one's a bit darker this one's a bit lighter but I don't think it's a problem. It's not that obvious, and uh, I don't mind at all. And especially, and I definitely wouldn't have uh, ripped the whole thing out just to change that. Um, yeah, so beautiful, big triangular shawl. Um, and the top I'm wearing is the Man Manzanita tee by Romy Hill. And it's out of this book, New Lace Knitting, and it's supposed to be this pullover. So you can already see that mine's quite different. Uh, for one, I used three different colors. Um, and again, I didn't stripe them. I did sort of fade them. I had a few rows here and a few rows here where I switched between color one and two and then two and three. Um, I changed the the ribbing up here, you're supposed to knit this last, but I didn't want that, so I just did a normal uh, one by one rib. And the same on the bottom of the pullover and the sleeves, I just did a normal ribbing. I thought there was enough happening in this pullover with the three colors, but um, yeah, I'm really happy. And um, 
so this is um, I think it's the second pattern that I've knit from this book and there are several others that I really would like to um, knit so I hope someday soon I'll be showing that book again yeah so that's what I'm wearing today and I'll put the shawl back on so that you can see it and I don't get cold so on to finished objects I have two finished objects today and uh, one of them is a pair of socks and last week I showed you um, her socks and this are his socks that's what I like to call them uh, I knit socks for a couple um, uh, for Christmas presents every year and um, so I always say these are, this is my sock couple and um, yeah last week I'd finished her socks this week I finished his socks and it's um, Hermione's everyday sock it's a, a free pattern on Ravelry I did the heel as specified in the pattern but I forgot about it um, when I knit the toe so it's just a normal what's called star toe in German um, and I did remember to do the same on the second sock so this pair is finished and um, yeah the only thing I, I have to remember is to actually send them off on time so that they arrive before or on Christmas so that was the first finished object and the second finished object is um, the cowl that I started I started it last week we just talked about starting it but it's the knit along that we're doing where we knit all the patterns from the simple collection by tin can knits and I started off with the um, cowl oats that's what the pattern is called and it's a very simple one as it's called the simple collection it's um, supposed to help beginning knitters beginner knitters to um, knit patterns that aren't complicated but still nice and interesting so it's not just a garter st stitch uh, scarf but um, you learn to knit in the round and you have a one by one rib top and bottom and then a third of the stitches are knit in garter stitch and the other two thirds are knit uh, in stockinette stitch and I used um, an opal DK weight sock yarn that I meant to have oh it's right here <laughs> so I used this color um, from the series lifestyle and I doubled it with this mohair silk and this mohair silk by Hansa farm and that's how the difference in the color comes um, that's why it has different colors so I used this sock yarn throughout and then switched from this mohair silk to that mohair silk um, yeah and I think it's quite interesting how the color itself um, changes and I'm really really happy I knit it a bit longer than it's um, uh, set in the pattern didn't want it too short but now I can if I fold it down I can either use show this side more I can show this side more depending on what I'm wearing so um, yeah I'm really happy with how that worked out and this is uh, my oats loop or cowl So that's that and the next thing I want to knit for the knit along I'll just say it now because I haven't started it yet um, I have enough yarn left um, both from the sock yarn and the mohair silk that I want to um, knit the gloves or wrist warmers or mittens I don't know what it's called maze it's also from the simple collection by Tim Ken knits and my plan is to have one hand with the dark and one with the light mohair silk um, so that should be fun and I'll show you how that works next week if I manage to knit I'm sure I'll manage to at least start with one so there should be something I can show you next week so then on to my works in progress and as usual I, I um, continue with my socks I'll start with my socks I've already shown you the one that I'd finished and this is a half finished object I finished the first of my um, eight ply socks that I um, that's yarn from Vollerödel 
uh, that's the shop that I used to work for years ago and um, I knit this sock toe up and I used a whole 50 gram ball to finish the sock so um, I used to do that in the shop to show people how far they get with one ball of yarn so with my shoe size it's a really nice sock with a fairly high leg but if your foot is bigger or longer then um, the yarn doesn't really you can't really have a lot of leg on your sock and to show that I used to knit those socks toe up and so I knit one ball of yarn for the first sock and I haven't started the second one but I will try and do it as quickly as possible so I don't get second sock syndrome and then um, I'll have a pair of really nice and soft and warm socks. Now the other socks I'm knitting it's uh, one of them is the brioche sock that I'm knitting. I'm knitting one color by um, from Opa Opal Schafpate. It's German it's yarn from German sheep that live in Germany and the yarn is produced in Germany. Everything's German about this yarn. Um, the colors are very bright and nice. And the other color I'm using is just a dark gray. So you can, my plan is that the socks will be reversible so I can either wear them this way or that way. And I haven't done too much on them last week. Last week I think I'd started with the yellow and now I've finished the yellow stripe and it's back to pink. Um, yeah, I still enjoy knitting it, but I still think without a heel, it's, um, it seems to take longer, which doesn't really make sense, but because I don't have, um, nothing ever changes and it seems to be the same the whole time. It seems to take a long time, but, um, yeah, I just didn't have time to knit on that a lot, partly because I just have so many projects on the go but also because my hands and my arms keep hurting and I have um, had to take more breaks than usual, which is quite strange for me because I'm used to be able to knit all the time. But lately I've been uh, forced to take breaks and uh, massage my hands and stuff to be able to go on. But anyway, as long as I can still do have some progress on some of my projects, I will keep showing you. <laughs> So the other two pairs I'm, I'm knitting are both socks, green socks or socks that have green in them because I want to donate them to a German organization who help women with ovarian cancer and they ask for green socks or socks that have some green in them so they can give them away. And this is the first one. Again, I'm um, using a colorful opal yarn. Um, this is from the Rainforest series and a single color. Opal yarn, the dark grey. It's one of the new colours that Opal came out with and I've just continued knitting a little bit on the foot. Last week I'd already finished the heel and um, yeah, I just need to keep going. I still enjoy the way the two colours work together. The pattern is fairly easy once you get the hang of it and um, yeah, so this is something I can keep going. And then the last sock it's a DK weight sock yarn. It's again the Lifestyle series. It's a new series that came out this year. And um, I'm knitting a pattern by a German designer who designed this pattern especially to be knit as green socks to be donated. And this is what the pattern looks like. Um, so this is the cuff, the ribbing. And um, this is one pattern repeat. I only did one and a half pattern repeats before I knit the heel because um, I figured that was long enough. And so I did a fish lips kiss heel and now I need to continue with the foot. So the pattern is only on one side of the leg and the back of the leg has this rip pattern, broken rip pattern. And now the sole of the foot will, will be stuck in that stitch and I'll just continue with this um, with the pattern over these stitches. So that's all the socks I'm working on. What else did I work on? I almost finished the poncho that I'm knitting as a costume and I think that's the word I couldn't remember last week. It's a costume for the theatre in Wiesbaden and I almost finished it. So I started on the back, 
knit up. Then I um, put some stitches aside for the neck opening, finished the neck opening, and then I finished the front. And as you can see, I'd already washed the back once, so because I wanted to see how how it would behave after it's being washed. And you can see it's it is a bit um, straighter uh, than the front. And in the front, you can see how the stitches pull together because of the knits and pearls. And even though that looks quite nice, I think I will when I finish it, I will wash wash it and block it a little bit to make it a tiny bit wider because I'm a bit worried it might be too tight otherwise. I knit three buttonholes on each side and then the back will get buttons. I put markers in where I want the buttons so there will be buttons and then the sides can be buttoned down um, but it could also be worn open or you could only just close one of the buttons and I'm supposed to knit a I think it's a turtleneck. Um, I will definitely finish it this week because the play is supposed to start sometime in November and I want to give them time to be able to use um, the costume during the rehearsal. So I will finish knitting it this week, but I hope if they do not need it this week, maybe I can show it as a finished object next week and then they can pick it, pick it up afterwards. But if she says she needs it this week, then I will just take pictures and show you pictures next week or insert them into the video or something. Uh, we'll see. So that's almost done. I managed to get some nice buttons. I'll show you those next week, either on the photograph or on the poncho itself. And then that should be done. And I think that's one of the reasons my hands were hurting because it's very big yarn. It's big needles. It's nine millimeter needles. And I used to knit a lot with um, bigger needles, but now since I've had my shop here, I've, um, I'm mostly knitting with thinner needles. So it's been quite a difference and because the whole thing is knit in one piece it's been really heavy the last um, few balls of yarn um, and I think that's one of the reasons my hands were hurting so it should be good once that's done and I can go back to my smaller and lighter projects so um, another thing is that not last week but the several months before or the, the last couple of months, I did a lot of crochet and that's not something I'm used to. So I usually knit a lot and crochet a bit, but the last couple of months I've been crocheting quite a lot and maybe that was um, something my hands aren't used to. So um, right now I'm not crocheting that much and we'll see if I get back to normal. The only things I did crochet during the last week is I finished this strip for the a canopy crochet along. It's extremely bright, but I really love it. I haven't um, done the last round that goes around it in black, and I still need to crochet both sleeves that will have the same pattern. I'll do them a bit smaller, I think, so they won't be too wide. And uh, with the sleeves, there'll be a row of black in between each color strip, stripe, so, um, that should look nice and I'm really looking forward to doing that I just couldn't find the time to do it last week so this is all I managed to do and um, the other thing that I crocheted is even smaller I crocheted and sewed on the eyes and noses on these cats for my cat blanket So that's three that I managed to do last week. So instead of doing a cat every day, it's more like a cat every two days. But I think as long as I keep working on this and I don't forget about it, I should be able to finish it by Christmas. And um, we'll see, maybe even continue on the dinosaur blanket before Christmas. We'll see. But yeah, for now, I'll be crocheting eyes and noses for cats. So that's the crochet I did. Um, what else did I knit? I knit on my memory blanket. Um, it's the pattern is um, the coziest memories blanket or coziest memory blanket. And it's a free pattern on Ravelry. And I knit the pattern once before with um, 
all the leftover yarn I had at that time. And with that blanket, I would use um, a color again and again until it was completely gone. But with this blanket, I decided to do one square for every project that I finish. So if I use the same color for several projects, I will have the same color again in this blanket. But as long as I do only one project with the color, there will only be one square in that color in that blanket. And I decided to do the first two rows of every square in black so that I will get like a black frame around each square. So I haven't knit on that for quite a while. These are all the squares that I already had. And these are the three that I added last week. So this was a pair of knee-high socks that I knit for friends. Um, that was the pair for her sister. And I used a gray that went with both of them that I will, want, uh, will try to attach here. This is a pair of socks that I knit not too long ago. And I actually did a second uh, project with this yarn because I knit um, a pair of wrist warmers after I finished the socks. I was on holiday in the summer and because I had the yarn and the needles with me, I just um, did the, the wrist warmers straight after I finished the socks. So I might do a second square with this color. And because it has a fairly long color repeat, it will still look different from this square, which is nice. And this color I used for a pair of socks where I held the yarn doubled. It was a test knit and I used three colors in those socks. And that was, that was one of the colors. That was the second color. And the third color was a gray and that I am planning to put in here. And I just realized that the next three squares that I have planned are the leftover yarns from this pullover from this t-shirt. So those three colors are supposed to go here after I put in the gray that goes with those two. Yeah, so that's my all memories, all projects memories blanket. Uh, and I'm really glad I picked it up again and I managed to put at least a few squares on it last week. Um, then I continued knitting on the baby surprise jacket that I had started last week. It's um, um, eight ply sock yarn by Opal. It's called the extra large and I did not add a lot but I finished the um, the five gar garter stripes, garter ridges that you have to do before you do the increases at the end and the beginning and so I've done the increases and I've added a few rows. So it doesn't look like much yet. <laughs> but um, yeah, I want to keep knitting on that. The baby that this, either this jacket or the, the one that I um, finished last week, um, the baby is five weeks old now. So it's probably still a bit too small for the jackets. Um, but I don't want to take too long to finish it. So I can decide uh, which one to send them so that the, when the weather gets even colder and the baby grows a little, um, he can wear it. So that's the baby surprise. Um, bum, bum. Okay, there's only two more projects that I can show you. Um, and one of them is the, is the hat that I plan to knit um, for the, what did I say, pattern battle? In German, it's Musterschlacht, and it's out of this Abo subscription yarn that I got with the last package. And um, I plan to do a multicolor or a stranded pattern, color, color work pattern <laughs> in the hat later on. But I want to start with a really long ribbing so I can fold it over um, before I start with the color work. So this is what I've done so far. Um, and it's quite interesting, the socks that I've seen on Ravelry knit with this yarn, um, it has really clear stripes, so you have the purple and then you have like one row of the turquoise and then again a stripe of lilac and then another row of say yellow or something. So it's these stripes that you get, but because I have so many more stitches than with a sock, the colors come out completely different, um, but I really like the way 
there's even some pooling of the colors so all the oranges the orange meets here and um, yeah I think it looks really nice and I um, have to put some work in well, I will try to get as much of the ribbing done as quickly as possible because I'm really looking forward to doing the color work section um, so yeah looking forward to doing that now the last project that I am going to show you is another knit along that I it's a knit along that I joined and it's a mystery knit along. It's the Slip Stravaganza knit along by West Knits by Stephen West and I decided to join that um, quite um, late in the game. So last Friday was the beginning of the knit along and I think the weekend before, my sister asked me if I wanted to join because she wanted to join, which was quite a surprise to me. And because I was um, planning to order yarn with Voldacke, who's a German um, yarn dyer, and they had put together colors in um, for the Mystery Knit Along by Stephen West. And those colors, color combinations just looked so nice. And so we both picked one. And these are the colors that I chose. And um, this is my main color. It's called Coconut Beach. And then my contrast color one is this one. And I just completely forgot what it's called. And, um, and then this is my contrast color two. And I'm just, I just completely forgot all the color names, but either tell you next week or you uh, go to their website and, and look them up. So this is, um, these are my contrast colors and I decided that this is contrast color two and these are one and three. Uh, the first clue, as I said, was uh, published on Friday and for the first clue, you only need the main color and contrast color one and three. And I have started knitting the clue. I have not finished the whole thing yet. If you are joining the Mystery Knit Along and you do not want to see what it looks like yet because you haven't started yet, then you have to look away now because I'm now showing what mine looks like. So this is what it looks like at the moment. This is the main color. That's the one that's sort of to the foreground. And then the background is striped with those two contrast colors. And he calls them honeycombs I think and the shaping is visible here and this is how it will continue until it comes to a point and then the first clue is finished and I will really try to finish the thing on by Thursday at the latest so that when the second clue comes out on Friday that I can uh, continue knitting. So it's, yeah, it's quite interesting. I have no idea how it will go on. I have no idea how this will grow into a big shawl. And I'm sure it's going to be a big shawl because first it's Stephen West and second we have 500, 500 grams of yarn. <laughs> so it's not going to be something small. And I think it's quite a lot of knitting for the first clue, but I hope to be able to, to do that. And, um, and as I said, I ordered new colors at Voldackel and even though I'm not really sure whether they ship outside of Germany uh, I'm pretty sure they um, ship within Europe I'm not sure whether they will ship to the US but maybe they do so um, I'll just show you some more of their colors and um, I will link their shop down below so if you want any of their colors um, if any of their yarn you can order it so my um, colors that I'm using for the knit along they're all um, dyed on on their classic base which is like a normal sock yarn at 75% wool and 25% um, polyamid and but they also have other bases and um, one of them is called pure it's a pure merino yarn um, high twist with a yardage of 366 meters to 100 grams, whereas the classic has 420 meters. And um, this is this is the, the pure yarn, and this is the main color that my sister chose. Uh, I kept it here so I could show it. She um, has the other one at home so she can start knitting. 
And this was one of the contrast colors that was supposed to be in her set. This is the color Noble Princess. This is called Pixie. And her other two um, contrast colors are princesses as well. Um, I forgot what kind of princesses, but um, so when she, she wasn't too happy with the Noble Princess because it's a bit too beige for her liking. And it wasn't that obvious on the computer that it would be that beige. She thought it would rather be a light gray. But I had ordered a very bright lilac color called Pandora. And that really went very well with her combinations. So we took that out and she put the Pandora in. Now she has two princesses, one Pandora, and then her main color is Pixie. And... Um, when she's finished the shawl, I will try and um, remember to show you on the video if you're interested. So this is the base pure. And then there's one other base that I will show you today because I forgot to bring the other one. Uh, and that's the extra fine. That's also a 75 wool, 25 polyamid yarn. But the, um, the yarn is a merino yarn, so, so it's a bit softer than the classic. And the colors that I ordered are called um, Aniwa Niwa. And that's a word for rainbow in some language. Could be from Hawaii, but I'm not too sure. But they have this rainbow color with combined with white and gray and dark blue. And I love them, so I ordered them all. So this is the Aniwa Niwa white. This is Aniwa Niwa navy and this is aniwaniwa gray i think they're extremely beautiful and i can't wait to start knitting it no idea when i will get around to doing that but i will definitely make socks for myself with this dark blue uh, rainbow color so that's oh and i um did remember to bring two of the uh, wound balls so this is what the white rainbow looks like when wound into a ball and I always think it's so interesting to, to see how different the colors look once you wind it into a ball and then they look different again once you knit them so it's really exciting so that's the rain gray rainbow I love it so that's all I have to tell you and show you today it's all i knit and crocheted and the new yarn that arrived in my shop i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one